Hey everybody, it's Brooke. I thought we would get back to working on our idea book. Um, although instead of doing it live, I'm going to do some videos for now. Uh, if you're interested in making this little beauty, stick around. We're going to do it along with one or two more. I'll be right back. I wasn't lying I'm back and we are gonna make this really fun little page with all these tags in it I thought this would be great for um, uh, using in your journal if you had a bunch of little pictures you could put on the tags or if you just had a lot of writing to do if you went on a trip you could put different locations on these there's a ton you could do with it and it's super easy so all we're gonna need today is whoa <laughs> 12 tags is what I decided on, although mine just ran away. Hold, please. There, I corralled them. Um, I decided 12 tags would fit well on my page. So, I'm sorry, 9, not 12. So, 9 tags are going to fit well on this page. However many tags you decide on. This is some coffee dyed parchment paper. And either uh, a page out of your idea book or I'm using this beautiful piece of old ledger to put my pockets on because I don't really want to sew the pockets directly onto my idea book page because then there's going to be a ton of stitching on the back. I don't mind some stitching showing through, but I don't want as much as this will involve. Okay, so that's all you're going to need. And maybe some glue stick, you know, some scissors, that kind of thing. Um, and then we are just going to make these little pockets, stitch around them, and glue it all to your idea book page. Easy. Okay, so what I did was, let me put this aside. What I did was just took my idea book page out and then took a piece of old ledger paper and cut it down to be pretty close to the right size. I think that will do. Um, you certainly don't have to do this part, as I said, and I'm not going to give you measurements because it's going to depend on your own idea book or what size page you're working on. So now what we need to do is cut our, excuse me, cut our parchment paper. And I want my pockets to be an, about an inch and a half tall because my tags are just under three inches. So that'll hold them securely. So I'm going to oops, get off there. I'm going to, um, let's see, how do I want to do this? I want to make it as, I want to make my pockets as wide as this page is. All right, so that's six inches. So I want to strip it six inches wide. And then, gosh, it seems like all the videos I do lately are extremely loud and crunchy. Let me pull that down so you can see it. So this piece is six inches wide, and then I want some strips. One and a half. And I think three strips are going to fit on this um, on this page three rows of pockets and you can get out your um, ruler and your protractor and your abacus however you want to do it however closely you want to do it um, to exact that is totally your call I am not interested in measuring at the moment and ciphering and mathing so I'm gonna eyeball it how about that pretty fancy so what I want to do is space out my pockets and I'm just gonna use oh I better get out my wax paper it's gonna go all crazy on the mat and that's how you end up with an ugly mat 
and then you have to go buy a new one that's purple. Ask me how I know. So I'm just going to use a little bit of glue stick to hold this down until we can sew it. And again, if you want to measure this and make sure it's absolutely exact, you go for it. I'm not going to. Okay, then I want the tops of my tags to reach the top of the page. So I'm just going to put that there to eyeball that. Let's put some glue stick on the edges of this. It's hard to glue with the coffee dyed tracing paper. It doesn't seem to want to hold all that well. We don't need a real awesome hold because we're going to sew it. This is just to sort of tack it in place. And I think I like that. Don't forget to leave space for your stitches. Actually, I could go up a little bit more. And that'll be good because that way our tag will sit right in there and we'll protrude out of the top of the book. Um, you could make it higher if you like that look of them hanging out. Totally up to you. Whatever you want to do. Okay, and then we can take this one and again kind of eyeball it. That looks pretty good right there. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to go ahead and just put a little glue stick down there. This is really self-explanatory. Um, again, because everyone's book is going to be different and everyone's tags are going to be different. I'm not giving any measurements. Um, it's up to your discretion. Stick. Just need to lay down until we get into the sewing machine. And now what I'm going to do is just sew it. I will, um, lost my train of thought. I will sew down this side, sew across, sew up that side. Sew down here, sew across, sew up there, same thing down here. And then I will just sew a line of stitches here and a line of stitches there to make my pockets. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. You just want to make sure that you've got enough space in between each row of stitches so that your tags will fit in. So what I do is put my tags in there to get an idea of where they're going to be and how I want them to look. This one's going to need to come over a little bit. This one in here. And then I'll take a ruler and where's my old Timmy ruler? Right here. I will take my ruler. Oh, come on. Glue stick is not working as well as a person would have hoped. Get down there. There we go. As I said, it's kind of tricky to get the glue stick to work with the parchment paper. Okay, so I like that pretty well. So I'm going to take my ruler. Let's see if we can get it straight. Wouldn't that be crazy? Crazy talk. All right. So we're going to sew right there. We're going to sew right there, we're going to sew right there, and I, you can just go back when you're done and erase if any of those pencil marks are showing, just go ahead and erase them. All the lines are worn off my Timmy ruler, it's kind of sad. Let's move that over so we can line it up. I'm just using my grid that's underneath the wax paper to try to get things lined up straight. And we can sew right there, and we can sew right there, and we can sew right there. And that is going to make that nice and easy at the sewing machine. Take your tags out because you'll sew them into the pockets. So as I said, it'll take this over and sew it. And when it's done, it's going to look just like the one I showed you. So you can see, let me put that up so you can see. So each little pocket is sewn. And that's exactly what I did was I went down, over, and up, and then did this, and then did that. And that is all it takes to make this adorable pocket. Um, what Corey did was used it to show off some of her uh, printables so she would know what she had. So she fussy cut a bunch of birds out and put them on each tag. 
for her idea book. And I thought that was smart, so you would know what you might have as a printable. So that is idea number 12. And I'll be back for number 13 in just a moment. And we're back for idea number 13. Um, I love this one. This is just a little sample that I made. So you have this cute little pocket foldy thing. And you've got a tuck spot here and a tuck spot here. Or you could make, well, it's a belly band, obviously. But you could make one tag long enough to go all the way through, however you want to do it. Or put two little guys in like I did there. And then depending on how you glue it on the paper, you can either have it be a pocket by gluing on three sides, and then you'd be able to put something in here, or you could put it more in the center of the page, just glue that side and that side, and then you'd have a belly band with something coming all the way through. Totally up to you. And then when you flip it open, you have two more little pockets inside. Here's our demo tag. There's one here, and then there's one here. I think this is super handy for a lot of different things. And a good point that Corey made in hers was in order to get things to be a little flatter, if you're really adding some bulk, you could use something like, um, this is that brown painter's paper. You could make the, ta uh, the pocket out of this to keep the profile a little lower. <clears throat> But I thought what I would do, <clears throat> pardon me, I thought I would use some of the beautiful onion skin ledger that I got from our friend Johnny, whom I will link below. That's the junk journal shop, but I'm sure you all know. So what you'll need is some kind of thinner paper or book page or a digital, whatever you want to use, um, a scrap of cardstock, then a little bitty scrap of cardstock and a couple tags. I'm using an eyelet and I'm going to use this little scrap of cream colored seam binding that I had left over. So this is an easy one and I'm not even going to sew it because I'm a rebel. So what I'm going to do is take this beautiful um, ledger page from Johnny and I'm going to just eyeball it and again I'm not measuring it the only measuring I'm gonna do is to make it a little less than six inches wide to fit in the idea book so I'm folding up the bottom pocket and we can fold this over and in order to keep the inside a pocket you don't want to fold the cover over all the way to your top edge. Uh, so I've got, I don't know, what is that, just about an inch above the um, the bottom pocket to allow things to go in and out. Okay, and I think, actually, you know what, I might bring it down even a little lower so we can have taller things to go in, which is fun. I am using the part of the ledger that had the number printed on it and these pretty blue stripes just because I like them. Okay, now I'll fold that back down. And that's pretty much the basic structure right there. Here's my bone folder. Well, you guys, I really have forgotten how to craft. Holy cow. I'm going to cut this to just below six inches. Or just less. Just less than six inches. Yeah, that's what I'm trying to say. Make sure I've got the right side here. Do we have the right side? Where are those numbers? Okay, we do. Just double check in. So, I don't know, five and three quarters. It sounds like a good a good place to be. Hold down the chopper. I was just all of a sudden thinking, is that right? <laughs> Boy, it doesn't take much to confuse me these days. Okay, and then decide where I want this to fold down to. And I don't want it to go all the way to the bottom. I'm thinking maybe there. And then what I'm going to do is just fold it so I know roughly where I want to cut it. See if we can get a straight cut. Wouldn't that be a thing? And 
let's see. This actually worked out really well with the ledger page because it had a torn corner, so I couldn't have used it as a full page. Um, so using it sort of as a scrap works out beautifully. So if you tear a page or do something like that, do not panic. It's not wasted. You can make something out of it. Okay, so there's that. And here's our scrap that we just cut off. And we're going to use that as well. Okay. Put the cutter away. So we have this. It's not wanting to stay laying where it needs to. Come on, you. You are straight. There we go. Paper has a mind of its own. And so there's that. I'm going to put that up. And then this guy can become our little bottom pocket. This is what we cut off here. Here. And I'm going to use this. I'm going to turn it around this way so we've got stripes on the other side as well. And this can be our little pocket on the inside. Now if you want to go around and ink everything, now's your, now's your chance. But what I will do is take a little bit of my oh goodness we got we got a big old stuck spot I also think I have some rust in there because I have lost my stainless steel pin I need to rectify that all right so we're just going to use the tiniest little bit it's so tiny you can't even see it coming out of art glitter glue and stick our pocket down now because this is so transparent that might show through a little bit but not like crazy okay and we'll just put that oh I need my wax paper you guys are letting me glue right on my mat again <laughs> yeah. so we can see a little bit of puckering from the glue but that is perfectly fine it'll uh, straighten out as it dries so basically we're halfway there so we've got our pocket here we're about to have our pocket right there and again all we're going to do is put down a tiny bit of glue i'm soaking all the tips for my art glitter glue because they all got gummed up and i want them to be clean now because even with almost no pressure on the bottle it comes out pretty fast I'll just try to line that back up, give it a good mash. So that finishes off all of our little pockets. Aren't they adorable? I love this, and I love the crinkly paper. All right. And again, you can make this absolutely any size you wanted. It depends on the size of the page you're working on. Uh, but as you saw, I did no measuring. I just eyeballed it. So now what we need to do is where our little our little sample go. So now what we need to do is put on this top piece that's making the belly band or pocket or whatever you want to do. So I've got this scrap of Tim Holtz cardstock and I pulled this one out because it's also blue like the lines in the ledger paper and I like that. And I don't want it to go all the way to the bottom. I think I want it to go right about there. Okay, and then I'll turn it over. Luckily, we have some lines. Isn't that handy? This, I think, is from the um, Wallflowers book, which, in my opinion, is the best one. All right, so just fold that over. And I'm going to trim off this bit because we don't need that much on the back. And then we have a nice little scrap. Again, look, we're making scraps out of our scraps. Exciting stuff. Okay. So we'll butt that up against there. Looking good. Turn it over. Fold the two creases together. And again with the glue. Press that down well. Maybe give it a crease with the bone folder. So then you've got a flap right here, and you could certainly leave it like this if you wanted to put more writing area or something up there. And then you would have 
this flap and then you'd have your two pockets inside. But I want to make uh, a belly band. So I'm just going to grab my pencil and make two quick little marks so that I know where to put the glue. So right in between the two edges of the belly band, we'll put a little glue. And I think I'll open this up in case it ooches out because you know it might. Okay, put that down. That way we didn't go too far with the glue. Grab those pencil marks. Get rid of those. Yep, I'm liking it. I love these colors together. Okay, and then we have our place to have tuck spots. Let me find a couple tags, or at least one tag. So we have sort of a belly band function on the top right there. I like that a lot. And certainly you could go to town decorating this tag, all kinds of places to decorate here. And then what I want to do, is, I'm going to take this out just because it's flapping around. We're going to put a little, um, I want to put a brad, or not a brad, an eyelet in here to kind of weigh it down and keep it, um, keep it from flapping around too much. So I'm going to take this little tiny piece of cardstock scrap and fold it in half. Grab my ink. I guess I probably should have inked th this piece too, but that is personal choice. Whatever makes you happy. Just ink it around so it stands out a little bit more. And yes, we're going to use, well, we're going to attempt to use the big bite. Huh. Will it happen? I haven't used it for a long time. It's like I've never done any of this before, you guys, seriously. Thank you for putting up with me. And I'm just going to use a little bit of glue. Again, I keep saying that, and it's not a little bit. I have to go check on the um, state of the fine tips. And then just folding it over, eyeballing the middle. Again, if you're happier measuring, if that makes you more comfortable, go to town. You measure your head off. I'm much more into the eyeball in it place. Oh, that is going to look cute. Okay, cover up that glue. And then, okay, it's it's that moment. Can we do it? So I have my um, 3 16 eyelets in here. And, oh, that's glary. I just reused an old plastic container. But I have the settings for the uh, Big Bite written there. It's A and 1 on your Big Bite. So let's see if we're in the right place. Here it is. Gosh, I'm looking at this like I've never seen this thing before. All right, so that's one and that's A. We're in business. I'm looking at these little blocks. Um, these have letters of the alphabet on them and these have numbers. So you just make sure that the bottom is at one and the top is A. Okay, now we're going to punch our hole. Let's see, that involves this guy sliding this button. And that says 3 16 Wow, really? Like I've never seen this before. I don't know if I can get it out of the glare. There I think you can just about see where it says 3 16 which is the size of my eyelet. And so I'm going to put this down. I know you guys can't really see, but I'm just sort of eyeballing it. You know what actually I think is going to be a better idea? I'm going to make a mark. Okay. Now the wax paper is irritating me. Bye! I'm going to make a mark estimating the center of this little piece um, just to make it easier to aim for. Okay. Again, eyeballed it. Now let's try that again. All right, slip that in there. You can see when the punchy part is coming down. Here we go. Yeah, that's pretty close. Pretty darn close. And now we'll take one of our eyelets. 
And I think I'll go for kind of a darker one, um, just so it stands out some more. We'll pop that right in the hole. <laughs> she says, like it's easy. Get that glary stuff out of the way. Get in there. You, get in there. There we go. And then we'll put it right into... Uh, oh, you do have to move this slide over because now you're going to be chomping. And it has an icon there. Um, so you've moved it from the hole punch section to the eyelet setting position. And you can see again where it's coming down. And so you can align your eyelet. I just don't see any way I can do it sideways for you guys to see. But there you go. Eyelet set. Had I not been talking and out of practice, it wouldn't have taken that long. And you can see it's nice and splayed on the back. So, yeah, big bite, very handy. So we have that. And I've got this beautiful scrap of cream-colored, <clears throat> excuse me, um, seam binding. So let's see if we can, what do I want to do? Maybe we'll just do an easy overhand knot. So I'm going to I'm going to do way too much. Ooh, I better cover those eyelids or they're going to go flying. So just get a pokey tool to help us get started. All right. Poke those through the eyelid. I'm not using a Tim Holtz pokey tool. I'm using one of these that have the ball on the end so I don't actually poke a hole in the seam binding, in case you were wondering. Okay. Even those out a little bit. And pull that down. And pull it right through. I love how this turned out. I think that this um, ledger paper is brilliant. It's just caught on the edge. There we go. And I love it with the Tim Holtz paper. And look how adorable it is. So that slides right in there. And again, you could switch out this string, but I really like these strings. Um, so you've got a belly band right there. And then when you open it up, you have these two adorable pockets. Let's put something in those adorable pockets. Uh, let's see. Golly knows I have enough stuff. Here we go. Uh, that's a frame. I don't want to use a frame. We have this pretty calling card, but it's kind of small. Oh, look, we have a map. Maps are fun. Let's put an old Tim Holtz map in there. That's upside down. So you could put something like that in there. And obviously it'll hold a lot more than just that. And then we have that card and this card we could put right in there. And it all closes up nice and neat. And there you go. That would be a fun addition on any old page. And that is um, flips, flaps, and folds, idea number 13, more. So I will be back in just a moment. We are back with um, idea number 14, which is this adorable folded pocket. Super easy, and all you're going to need is one piece of paper. Um, so if you see here, there's a pocket in the back. There's a second pocket. Oh, you can't really tell. Let's see if we can do it this way. Oh, there. You can tell a little better. So there is a tuck spot back here. And then there is a tuck spot here. And a tuck spot here. Oh, it's getting away from me. And a tuck spot there. So four different little pockets. Um, that will hold things in nice and snugly and I didn't glue on this side just so they could hold it could hold bigger items um, so all this is is folding a rectangle 
take these guys out. Uh, I did use thin paper. You're not going to want to use cardstock. I use uh, a digital. And you can use single-sided paper. You can use um, a digital. Again, you could go back to the painter's paper. Um, pretty much anything you wanted to use. It's nice to be able to use up some single-sided paper without fretting. I'm just going to use a book page. Um, I think that Corey said it does work better with non-directional paper because you're folding it all different kinds of ways, but I frankly am fine with it um, being directional because I'm really just going for the textures and the colors. So that will be just fine. So let's get that one out of the way. All right, so all you're going to do is start with a rectangle. doesn't matter what size. Uh, you don't want to go too tiny, but... Um, a square will not work because you'll get wonky edges. So we're gonna go with a rectangle. And I like, oh, and mine is six and a half by just shy of 10. And this is from an old 1960s uh, sort of cookbook featuring famous restaurants from the time, from back in the day. So I'm just gonna fold it in half this way also known as lengthwise, not just this way. Use my bone folder and then open it up and fold in the two corners at the bottom so that they meet. Now you want to make sure you get a nice um, point down here at the bottom uh, and you don't want to go over your fold because your lengthwise fold because you'll end up with a whole lot of bulk that you really don't want. If it's not exact, is it the end of the world? Gosh, no. It certainly is not. Whoa! And I almost caught my coffee cup in that process. Wow. I'm a menace. Menace to society and myself. Okay, and then you turn it around and you're going to do the same thing on this side. Pretty easy so far, huh? Yep, I think so. Again, getting them as close as you can without overlapping that center line. Give it a mash. This paper is old and it's cracking a little bit, but that is okay. I'm gonna bring that one in just a little bit more. Let me see. Right, I'm trying now to adjust to being upstairs and where the camera is. Tricky business. Okay, then you're going to take this and you're going to fold it. Okay, fold it that way. So this is what I was looking for was this beautiful picture of, it's uh, I think a oil pastel picture of some restaurants. Okay, and then you have to decide, do you want it on the left-hand side of your page like this? Or do you want it on the right-hand side of your page like this? And I think, oh, look, thank you, Johnny, if you're watching. Yes, that would be a confetti heart. Oh, she's very naughty. I really like this image, and so I think I would like that to be showing. And so then you just decide how big you want each of your tucks, pucks, pockets, tucks, that. Um, you could go all the way up, but then that would sort of defeat the purpose of seeing all the different pieces. You could go really short like this, uh, but I'm going to kind of go in the middle-ish like this. Yeah, this paper is kind of old. Make sure your paper, paper is not brittle because that's kind of a bummer. But for demonstration purposes it'll be just fine and that is that now had I gotten that fold a little closer a little neater that would be a better point but what are you gonna do okay and that is it so for gluing what I do is I'm gonna glue this edge Oop. once again I move the wax paper <laughs> okay so glue that edge fold it up good thing I put it back huh look we've got ooze glue ooze and now I've got glue all over my fingers and really then you just glue 
here and glue here and put it on your pocket so that way they're actually kind of tuck spots rather than pockets and so when you put it on your page let's get something out here so you can see it a little better when you put it on your page you'll have it like this and then you'll have your four little spots to tuck things in and the reason I left it a tuck spot rather than a pocket is I like to angle things like this so that you can kind of see that all the little bits and pieces that are sticking out and then I had this adorable layaway tag from practice makes pretty I think oh, gosh I haven't ordered from Denise forever um, I will link her down below too she always has cool stuff I assume she still does uh, but then once it's glued down you're all set and you have all these cute little tucks you can decorate however you want and that is idea number 14 so I think that's gonna bring us to an end today and I want to thank you so much for